Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to divide by a mixed decimal. Now, a mixed decimal has a whole number and decimal digits. Now, decimals and division show up all throughout math and life as well. So being able to work with decimals and solve division problems involving decimals will be beneficial no matter what class, level of math, or goal you are working towards. Whatever your situation may be, this should be helpful in better understanding division problems that involve decimals. Let's jump into number one where we have 3 and 22 hundredths divided by 1 and 4 tenths. Now the first thing that we need to do, we need to set this problem up. That way we can go through the division process. 3 and 22 hundredths is the dividend, the number we are dividing. It goes under the division bar. 1 and 4 tenths is the divisor, the number we are dividing by. It goes on the outside of the division bar. Now we have our division problem set up. But before we go through the division process, we have a division problem that involves decimals. So we always need to check, is the divisor a whole number? One and four tenths is not a whole number. That means we need to make it a whole number. We do this by multiplying the divisor by a power of 10. This will shift the digits to the left and make the divisor whole. Now we can make that very simple and just think of this as moving the decimal to make the divisor whole. For example, let's move this decimal one place to the right so it goes after the 4 and we have a whole 14. Now whatever we do to the outside, the divisor, we must do to the inside, the dividend. So let's move this decimal once to the right as well. Now again, technically we multiplied the divisor and dividend by a power of 10 to shift the digits to the left and make the divisor whole. For example, we multiplied the divisor by 10 for number one in order to make it whole. That shifted the digits one place to the left and again gave us that whole divisor. We then needed to multiply the dividend by 10 as well. We made this process simpler to think through by just thinking of this as moving the decimal to make the divisor whole. Whatever we do to the divisor, we must do to the dividend. Making the divisor whole places the decimal for us in our answer, and since our divisor is now whole, we can go through our division process, the same process we use with whole numbers. So divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat. Now we need to rewrite our new equivalent problem with the whole divisor. So our dividend is 32 and 2 tenths divided by 14. Now as far as our new equivalent problem, is the divisor a whole number? Yes, so we can bring the decimal straight up into our answer. Now let's go through the division process, starting with divide. So we have 3 divided by 14. How many whole groups of 14 in 3? Well, we can't do that, so we need to use the 2 and look at 32. How many whole groups of 14 in 32? Well, 2. That gets us to 28. So the 2 needs to go above the 2 in 32, not the 3, since we used both the 3 and the 2. Now multiply. 2 times 14, 28. Subtract, 2 minus 8, well, we need to borrow. So we have 12 minus 8, which is 4, and then 2 minus 2 is 0. So 32 minus 28 equals 4. Then we bring down. That gives us 42, and we repeat. So we go back to divide. We have 42 divided by 14. How many whole groups of 14 in 42? Well, 3. That hits 42 exactly. Multiply, 3 times 14, 
42. Subtract, 42 minus 42 is zero. We went all the way over to the right within our dividend as far as bringing digits down, and we have a clean cut zero at the end. So we are done. Our final answer, two and three tenths. Let's move on to number two, where we have 46 and 5 tenths divided by 6 and 2 tenths. Let's set this problem up. 46 and 5 tenths is the dividend, the number we are dividing. 6 and 2 tenths is the divisor, the number we are dividing by. Now that we are set up, we need to check, is the divisor a whole number? 6 and 2 tenths is not a whole number, so let's make it a whole number. Let's move the decimal once to the right. So now we have a whole 62. Technically, we multiplied our divisor by 10. That was the power of 10 we multiplied the divisor by. Now whatever we do to the outside, the divisor, we must do to the inside, the dividend. So let's move this decimal once to the right as well. And again, technically, we are multiplying our divisor and dividend by 10. Now we have a whole divisor, so we can rewrite our equivalent problem. We have 465 divided by 62. Now that we have our rewritten equivalent problem with a whole divisor, we can go through the division process, starting with divide. So we have 4 divided by 62. How many whole groups of 62 in 4? Well, we can't do that, so we need to use the 6 and take a look at 46. How many whole groups of 62 in 46? Well, we can't do that either, so we need to use the 5 and take a look at 465. How many whole groups of 62 in 465? We're going to need to estimate and check in order to figure this out, because I don't know how many whole groups of 62 are in 465. So let's come to the side and again estimate and check. I'll use 62 times 10 as a reference, a starting point. We know 62 times 10 is 620. That gives us something to go off of. We can base our first estimate off of 620 and go from there. 465 is less than 620, but it's kind of close, so let's back up from 10 and try 62 times 8 and see how close we get. So let's multiply 62 times 8. And again, see how close we get. We are estimating and checking. 8 times 2, 16. 8 times 6, 48. Plus 1, 49. So we get 496, which is too much. So we need to back it up. Let's try 7. 62 times 7. 7 times 2. 14, 7 times 6, 42, plus 1, 43. So 434. It's going to be 7 whole groups of 62. So put the 7 above the 5 since we used 465. Now multiply. 7 times 62, 434. Subtract. 5 minus 4 is 1, 6 minus 3 is 3, 4 minus 4 is 0. So we get 31. So 465 minus 434 equals 31. Now we are at the bring down step, but there's nothing else to bring down. And we don't want to write 7 remainder 31. We are working with decimals, so we want to keep everything in decimal form, even the answer. So we need to continue this problem. So what we can do, we can place the decimal in our dividend. A decimal comes after a whole number, so after 465. Then we can write a zero in the tenths place. Now we're able to bring that zero down and continue the problem. 
That zero to the right of a decimal does not change the value of the problem. We still have 465, so we are able to do this. Once we place the decimal and write the zero, we can bring the decimal straight up into the answer and bring the zero down. We have 310 and we repeat, so we go back to divide. 310 divided by 62. How many whole groups of 62 in 310? Well, 310 is exactly half of 620, so it's going to be 5. But let's come to the bottom and make sure. Let's do 62 times 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 1 is 31. So 5 whole groups of 62 hits 310 exactly. So let's put our 5 up here, and we can extend this division bar. Multiply, 5 times 62, 310, subtract, we get that clean cut zero. We went all the way over within our dividend, and we have a clean cut zero at the end, so we are done. Seven and five tenths is our final answer. So there you have it. There's how you divide by a mixed decimal. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.